Today's topic, out-of-body experiences. This episode of Awkward Anthems is brought to you by your sleep paralysis demon, that shadowy figure that lies in wait. As you enter the in-between state of consciousness where your body's asleep, but your mind is very much awake. Subscribe today, and we'll throw in this cute little gargoyle to sit on your chest and prevent movement of any kind. Say hi, Bob. My name's Jerry. Your sleep paralysis demon, it feeds on your fear. Nighty night. If you would like to get the most value out of this video, I would simply make one request, and that is to keep an open mind. Because the topic of out-of-body experiences is not easily explained by modern science. Now, you could certainly draw conclusions based on what we know about the science of dreaming. In both scenarios, there's a shift in consciousness that's happening, but that's where the water gets a little murky. Is consciousness merely a function of our physical brain, or can it exist outside of us? There isn't full consensus on this. An out-of-body experience is a uniquely complex one, and in my opinion, it's a road that has to be personally tried traveled to fully appreciate. For me, that journey started in my early 20s. I was having really vivid dreams with one oddly specific thing in common, the sound of a disembodied voice with great urgency telling me to wake up. Amy, wake up. Bah! which I did, naturally. But this didn't feel like a voice in my head. It literally felt like something outside of me, in my room, screaming in my ear, wake up. <gasps> Yes, it sounds terrifying, but the voice itself was always familiar, sometimes disguised as the voice of my mother or a friend. It wasn't scary, it was just odd. Some years later, my curiosity about this experience led me down a rabbit hole. I went to Google and typed in lucid dreaming. I've been a lucid dreamer my entire life. Lucid dreaming is simply the state of being aware that you're dreaming while you're dreaming. What normally happens is we enter the REM cycle of sleep and find ourselves lost in a narrative that makes perfect sense until we wake up. And it's only in the first groggy moments of our waking state that we think to ourselves, but how did I melt into a metallic substance while shooting electricity through my fingers? Also, that sounds suspiciously like the plot to my favorite Nickelodeon show from the 90s. Studies show that when we dream, the areas of our brain responsible for planning and logic are diminished. That means that physically morphing into a chemical substance is a scenario you can buy into, and in fact, you're probably just drooling on your pillow. But with lucid dreaming, the same part of our brain lights up like a Christmas tree. So you're getting the same dream experience, but in a lucid dream, your planning and logic capabilities remain somewhat intact, which means you have total control over your dream world. And let me tell you, if you have never flapped your arms before and lifted off of the ground, you are missing out. But the rabbit hole went even deeper for me. In my research on lucid dreaming, I stumbled on a book written in 1971 by Robert Monroe called Journeys Out of the Body, a book that popularized the term out-of-body experience, a sensation of your consciousness or your awareness separating from your physical body. Where am I going with this? These episodes are more commonly reported by people that have had a near-death experience or some sort of trauma. But for Monroe, it was a spontaneous occurrence that seemed to be triggered by simply drifting off to sleep. In the spring of 1958, Monroe found himself floating above the bed that he shared with his wife. So I moved a little closer, and then this great shock came over me because the person in bed with my wife was me. Trippy. And then the fright came, the terror. What am I doing? Am I dying? Uh, let me get back quick, something. So I went through the air like this, <laughs> swimming through the air to get back to the body, pang, and got back in the body. That was the first time. Monroe decided to document these experiences, and he did so with a great deal of skepticism. He came from a very academic background and wasn't greatly influenced by religious teachings. He initially thought this phenomenon might have been a symptom of physical or mental illness, a brain tumor, stress, maybe the onset of psychosis, the latter of which made it very difficult to share without being branded cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Monroe was deeply conflicted about the mystical nature of what he was experiencing. He writes, It struck hard at nearly all of my life experience to that date, my training, my concepts, and my sense of values. But if I rejected what was evident to me, if to no one else, then I would also be rejecting what I respected so greatly, that mankind's emancipation and upward struggle depends chiefly upon his translation of the unknown into the known, through the use of his intellect and the scientific principle. Great book. 
I read this book cover to cover, and also with a great deal of skepticism. But even if it was purely science fiction, I figured, what's the harm in me trying for myself? Either there's something to it or there's not, but there's only one way that I'm gonna be sure. This book has shown me the door, and now I will attempt to walk through it. Now, not literally. Well, actually, yeah, literally. <laughs> Whoa. Now before I show you how I did this, let me just briefly sidebar here. If you've never tried this before but are curious and would like to investigate for yourself, just remember, your thoughts and beliefs have incredible power. You will manifest whatever you're thinking about, feeling about, and it will be instant. And I know some of you are gonna say, Amy, I think you've watched The Law of Attraction too many times. Movie trailer guy? Yeah, what's it to you? Mike, is that you? How does she know my name? It's on your invoice, Dad. God, you're an idiot. But let me just say, in the most literal sense, that law is the law of the land, and it rules everything in this experience. And that means your fear can manifest Bob. My name's Jerry. Or it can manifest beautiful, loving beings that are not Bob. My name's Jerry! Okay, first of all, I have asthma, so I will call you whatever I want until you get off my chest. Ah, go f yourself. Okay, back to Reddit with you. I'm gonna let that one slide. So, are you ready to go on a little adventure? Here's how you induce an out-of-body experience. Step one, lay down on your back in a comfortable spot when you're ready for bed. This feels natural. Now you might want to experiment with this at different times. This seems to be more easily induced with naps for me, but your mileage may vary. Step two, turn on some light binaural beats. If you find some good binaural beats on YouTube, anything between this frequency and this frequency works great. Step three, now most importantly, the goal here is to allow your body to fall asleep, but not your mind. I know this sounds weird, but just bear with me here. If you've ever had sleep paralysis before, you've already stood at the gateway to an out-of-body experience without even trying. And this is why you have to be extremely mindful of your feelings. Fear of the unknown can be a natural response, but fear attracts fearful things. Peggy is deathly afraid of cotton balls. You'll know something's happening if you start to feel a pulsing sensation in your body or a flood of sound. It can be auditory, it can be visual. For me, the first time I realized, oh my God, something weird is happening, I immediately bailed and then journaled about it. Actually, you know, I think maybe I'll read you some. October 21st, 2011 at 3.43 in the morning. Holy sh it's real. It started with a roar of a freight train that sounded like it was passing right over my body. More like a freight train, am I right? Then I heard cats screeching. And then I heard the sound of some dude with a really menacing tone and a thick New York accent say, my accents are terrible, but... <clears throat> so this girl wants to know what it's all about. Like, straight out of the newsies. All right, everyone remain calm. I bailed that time because I got spooked. But the first time I didn't bail was the most magical, bizarre, more real than real experience of my life. I literally shot out of my body like a bullet from a gun, straight through my bedroom door, and I found myself floating in my living room, moving through the air like I was moving through warm water. And when I reached for the ceiling, I could feel like the popcorn ceiling texture. I couldn't believe how heightened my sense of touch was. In fact, all of my senses were amplified. And I saw this white figure sitting on the edge of my Ikea futon. And I was too scared to acknowledge their presence, but I felt very protected and loved. Are you sufficiently weirded out? Great, let's continue. Anyway, I shot through my floor after that, flew across the universe, and woke up awestruck and with absolute conviction that waking life as we perceive it, as you perceive it right now watching this video, this might be the actual dream. And the urgent disembodied call for me to wake up, Amy, wake up, bah, might have been an invitation to spiritually wake up to something greater, some force, energy, intelligence. I don't know how to label it. I just know that sharing this on the internet 
was a choice, and it probably makes me sound cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I saw heaven! But maybe not. Maybe you've had a similar experience. Maybe you had a different read on it. Maybe you should tell me in the comments. And until next time, awkward and out. You know, the problem with applying the lipstick is I lick it off after like five minutes and then I gotta reapply. I'm gonna have to get some crazy B-roll for this. Do I need a reapplication? My name's Jerry. <laughs> oh God, I have to walk into a door for this. Ow. Stop laughing. Stop smirking. My name's Jerry!